So, as Katmus mentioned, we are going into the exciting world of radio communications and in a bit we'll also be looking at circuits. So, the reason why we're doing this is because, as we found out in that mission a little while ago, information is key. The faster you can get information to people, the more likely they are to find an enemy, shoot them down. So, what we're looking for in radio comms is ability to understand, so know what the other person is saying, and to be able to say it quickly, so brevity. Those are the two main things that we're aiming for. So if we start on the second page, so Radio Basics. So if we look at normal English, it, it's quite long. Uh, but the great advantage that just regular English has, it's easy to understand because I can elaborate as many ways I can say things. It's very adaptable. So if I was trying to line up on a runway, I'd just simply say, Hello Tower, this is Hammer 1. I'm currently lining up for departure on runway 25. Nice and easy, but there's a lot of unnecessary words there. So with radios, we just cut them out and we keep it to the bare basics. So that would instead become Tower, Hammer 1, lining up for departure, runway 25. And if you look, each part is answering a question. So the first part is, who am I talking to? The Tower, who am I? Hammer 1. Uh, in some cases, you might add, where am I? Such as uh, the bottom there, downwind. What am I doing? And where am I doing it? So everything you're doing is answering a question. Uh, so let's now look at the types of radio calls. So there's three main types that require differing amounts of responses. Uh, so if we start at the top, there's clearance. This requires you to read back exactly what air traffic has told you because they're perhaps clearing you to land or they're clearing you to join a circuit and they have to know that you have understood exactly what they've said. Otherwise, potentially, you may, you may not be clear to land and you'd say clear to land or think you've been clear to land and we could have an accident. Uh, so the next uh, category down is instructions. So this is where maybe uh, t the approach has told you to do something, but you don't actually have to follow it out. You should carry it out, but only when safe to do so. And if it's a short, easy to understand phrase, you can just reply with Roger, which is I have understood, or Wilco is I've understood and will comply with it. Uh, but if it's some longer information where there could be some misunderstanding, then you should read it back. And finally, there's information, which is just telling you something around no requirement to, uh, to re read it back unless you have been asked specifically to do so. Uh, so, going on to that matter exactly, we have readbacks, so dead simple, uh, we've got a good example here, so if you're on final, you go tower, hammer one, final, the tower would then reply, hammer one, clear touch and go, and you, all you have to do then is read that back and append with your call sign, so clear touch and go, hammer one, so dead easy. Uh, so another example here is somebody's just giving you some information. Hammer flight left turn bearing 210. You see a left turn bearing 210. Hammer. Dead simple. Uh, so carrying on with readbacks, if we go on to the next page, uh, we have uh, what to do if yeah, it's either you haven't heard what the person has said, or you can't quite remember it, or if you have said back the information incorrectly. So in this case, if you haven't heard what somebody said, you just simply ask the caller, Overlord, say again. And they should repeat the information back. Hopefully you'll hear it that time and you can read back as normal. If in the case of the bottom right hand corner here, uh, you have read it back incorrectly, then the tower or the ATC or uh, GCI will read it, uh, will say, Hammer, negative, I say again. Left bearing 2 on 0. So it's that phrase, negative, I say again. If you hear that, you know you've said something back incorrectly, and so you need to listen out for those additional uh, instructions. So for radios, we have a series of uh, standard phrases. So we have these because we need those two factors, brevity and understanding. Sometimes these concepts can be quite complicated, and we want to condense them down into a single word that everybody agrees on the definition for. And in English, sometimes some words can have multiple meanings or mean different things to different people. In aviation, these words always mean the same thing to everybody. Uh, so uh, there's lots of words here, but I've highlighted the ones in bold that are the key ones. So a big one that people often get wrong, and I'm guilty of myself, is a firm and Roger and copy. So the difference is, is Roger and copy is I have understood what you've said, but it doesn't actually mean you're agreeing with it. So, if somebody has, asked, has given you clearance or an instruction and you say, Roger, that doesn't mean you're actually going to carry out what they've said, it just means, yeah, I've understood that. 
Whereas what you should reply is A firm, is yes, yes, I'm going to carry that out, or alternatively, Wilco, or Will complies, what that short's for. Uh, we've, uh, we've got, so cancel. If somebody's given you clearance, said you cleared to land, but then come back with cancel, that means your clearance is gone, you're going to have to perhaps do a go around. Uh, cleared is the opposite, you have been cleared to do something under whatever conditions are specified. Uh, if you want to request, uh, just check something, just to ask ATC, uh, confirm active runway is uh, runway 09, and then the tower reply, affirm runway is runway 09. Uh, correct is, you'd respond just if somebody has uh, read something back, you may just say correct, just to uh, let them know they've successfully read it back. Uh, correction is a useful one, so we often, we're all human, we often make mistakes. If you have said something correctly, you just go uh, disregard correction, and then you make the change. And yeah, so disregard is just simply ignore what I've just said. Uh, we've talked about um, I say again, so if there is a really important in piece of information, then don't say repeat, because repeat means drop another bomb in many circumstances. Uh, so instead we say, I say again, to repeat for clarity or emphasis. And then we have uh, negative and negative I say again. Uh, so negative is, is just no, or perhaps permission's not granted, depending on the situation. And then negative I say again is no, you've said that, you've read that back incorrectly, this is the actual message. Uh, read back, so if ATC it gives you some information and then it pens it with readback. You must read that back. Uh, request is if you want to know some information, or perhaps you want to request clearance to do something. Uh, Roger is I have understood, but not yes. Uh, say again is just asking somebody to repeat what they've just said. Uh, and finally, we have unable and will curb. Just to interrupt slightly. We always use Roger as yes. It's like, yeah, I see. Yeah, that's what are you we. Going south? Uh, that's are you going south? Are you going south, Sir Sherman? Roger, we always do that. All of us do it every day. Yep, that's, that's what I mean. This is one thing we really, really have to hammer out of us because Roger can be, yeah, I've understood that, but oh, maybe you're just, maybe you're just thinking about it. Oh, should I do that? Maybe, maybe there's uh, some hostiles where he's told me to go. Maybe I shouldn't go there. So you haven't said you're going to conform with it. You're just saying, I've understood what you said, but that's So still just to confirm. The correct use of Roger is you understood the message, so you say Roger, and then you respond with the following message. Yeah. So yeah. just to confirm, uh, if I said Sherman, there are bandits on your six, he would say Roger because it's just he's just receiving that information. He's not yeah. giving any. Yeah, but, but you haven't asked him to no. do anything. You're just giving but, uh, him information. But, so you, he said I've understood. But if that. I said uh, Sherman, have you checked your six? He can't say Roger. He should say uh, a, firm. a firm or negative. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Real cool. So, question, Blood, is it is the correct term affirm or yes? Because I was taught that in brevity, um, yes is the correct term, but I was de uh, given radio training on the ground side. Uh, so everything I've read, at least in the Civil Aviation Authority's manual, where this all this is from, uh, is it's a firm is the correct radio term. Okay. And you can also use will call for will comply. Yep. Okay. So yeah, Wilco is quite a good one when communicating with ATC. And finally, so this is something that we are guilty of in a different amounts, are some good uh, transmission techniques that I've lifted from the Civil Aviation Authority's manual. So first is just talking a normal conversation tone. You don't have to do a special voice for the radio. Although I've seen a lot of pilots who have a special radio <laughs> I voice. I love that. Uh, uh, really? Number two, yeah. Oh, so we're talking about, well, some of us do it. I can, I'm not pointing your fingers, no. but some of us do it. I think oh, I yeah, have a bit of a radio saying. voice. Uh, but anyway, uh, so part two is maintain an even rate of speed. So don't talk really quickly and try and get everything out really fast. You'll notice some professional pilots that do this. They they want to be the fastest on the radio. You know, yeah. the guy who speaks uh -huh. ridiculously quickly. <laughs> and everyone else is going, what have they just said? <laughs> That's brilliant. Fuck, you know. Heaven forbid they have an accent as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the other one is, accents, for example. So, yeah, the other one is maintain just a constant speaking volume. Don't get really loud and sometimes talk really quiet. <laughs> because again, that's something. Cap that's... does that. Ah, <laughs> uh, recoil tends to. Yeah, that. that's really quiet. Talk to the other side. Recoil is. Engaging from the southwest. Fuck. Mm. 
Continue. Uh, number four is a slight pause before after numbers it helps a lot because again going back to the speaking really quickly thing sometimes somebody like rattle off a load of numbers you know go bearing this uh, climb to this altitude etc etc and you're just going sorry what I perhaps got the bearing for altitude and so having that pause because sometimes people might be writing these numbers down mm. so that helps uh, avoid hesitation sounds such as uh so a good thing with that is number seven is make sure you know what you're going to say before you press that button. I've seen a lot of people who have pressed the radio button and then gone, what am I going to say? Uh, <laughs> can I yeah, actually have you see uh, a lot? <laughs> but every single one of these points applies to me and I don't like it. <laughs> you actually see it a lot in simple radio where somebody wants to say something, they click down the radio for a minute and then unclick it. Yeah, I, I've done <laughs> it quite a few those. times. Too. Sometimes the break of a long message, but yeah, sometimes you're, you're pressing it. Oh, hang on, I forgot to say that other thing, oh, and then press it again, which is extremely or bad you if you on real radio. A sentence. Yeah, because that's very bad on real radios. Because when you press that mm -hmm. transmit button, it, you cannot hear anything anybody mm -hmm. says. So if somebody else transmits at the same time, they also can't hear, and everyone else is just hearing garbled nonsense. Uh, so the like reason for that is, of course, half and full duplex radios. Roger, there's um. Sorry, guys. Let's carry on to the list before we launch. Right, right. number six. I wonder who's guilty of number six. Avoid six. excessive courtesies and entering to non-operational conversations. Ignore it. <laughs> so, <laughs> on your local radio, there's only four of you on it. So, having non-operational conversations is not too bad. But on 240, you have everybody on the mission. Could be 20, 30 people. So, if you're suddenly talking about, oh, uh, how do you fire rockets in the, the 25 again? And you're having this long conversation about, right, now you need to press number 7 and do this. Suddenly, that whole frequency, nobody mm -hmm. can use it. And somebody be call calling out foxes or saying, we've just spotted some bandits on the horizon, etc, etc. And they, nobody will hear that. And this, and number 8 is quite a good one. Is Often I've heard people come up with these ridiculously long request things. What you need to do is, br if it's a long request or a lot of information, break it down so you only have three specific phrases per message. And then get people to read it back after each one, because if you're reading six or seven things out, nobody's going to remember half mm -hmm. of them. Understood. Cool. cool. That's radios. Everybody happy? Any questions? So number six, we've got to find a way of enforcing them, because that's the uh, main abused one, and most people are probably guilty, or some people are, at least. So that's the one we've yes. got to... Drilling. So, local radios, not too bad, don't really mind so much, and flight leaders, you can enforce that to whatever degree you wish, but global, no non-operational conversations, as said.